What's up YouTube? It is your boy JB and I'm here tonight with the review for The Real Housewives of New York. Season 13, episode 6. The episode is titled Stop Stop and Throw the Roses. Is that correct? That doesn't sound correct. Let me go double check. What roses? Oh, yes it is. <coughs> All right, you guys. So, my bad. That's not COVID, by the way. So, before we get into this review, if you guys are watching this video or any other video on the channel and you guys are not already subscribed to the channel, then hit that subscribe button and stop taking me out on a date and not paying for my dinner. So, with further, without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about this review because I got some things to discuss. Shall we? All right, you guys. So, this episode, it picks up where we left, left, left off last week with Ebony getting up and leaving the table and leaving Lou's house. So when she gets ready to leave, Sonia and Heather are following behind her. And Ramona is still sitting at the table with, Ram with um, Lou. Now the thing with, that bothered me with Lou and Ramona at that table, they still sitting there trying to justify what just happened. And I'm like, you can't be that obtuse you can't be that oblivious to what just happened and what you just literally said to this woman, this black woman, you called her angry. I'm like, you can't be that oblivious or obtuse, but I guess obviously they are. Um, and they're full of shit to keep it real with you. And Luann must have a hearing issue. She must be as hard of hearing as I am because, well, even I'm hard of hearing and I heard that clear and loud as day that she said, because she thinks that Ebony says she's the most smart, she's the smartest one at the table. That's not what Ebony said. Ebony says she was the most educated at the table. And once again, I will say it this week, that is a fact. She is the most educated person at that table. Like, have any of you guys been to law school? If not, miss me with the bullshit. So, actually, before we talk about, move on, I want to address something that I saw on social media. So, Real Housewives of Atlanta star Kenya Moore. Kenya decided that, and Team Tori, you guys, if you are watching this, you might hate, you might not like what I'm about to say, but I don't care because I got to speak my piece. So, Kenya has felt the need to speak on the situations with both Garcelle and Ebony on Real Housewives of New York and Beverly Hills. So, right now, I'm going to talk about Ebony first, and then I'm going to move into talking about Garcelle. So, Luann must have went on Instagram last week and said something. So, Kenya got under the comments and made the comment that just because you have a degree or something, and I'm paraphrasing, just because you have a degree, it doesn't equate to being smart or something like that. Well, if you actually listen to what Ebony said, Ebony never equated her having a degree to being smart. Ebony equated her degree to what it actually is, being Edu having an education she has an education she has a degree and you know she has her degrees so she is educated that never she never said she's the most she's the smartest person there which what Kenya was saying is true just because you have an educate you know you have a degree doesn't make doesn't mean you're necessarily the smartest person that's true but that's not what Ebony said and then she chimed in on the situation between Garcelle and Kyle. So she said that she felt like Kyle would have, you know, when Evan, when, um, not Kyle, I am talking about Kyle. When Garcelle, when Garcelle asked Kyle, would she have done that to the other white women? Kenya said she feels like she would have. Honestly, I believe Kyle would have. I do. But that's not the point. What the point was with Garcelle was she was trying to educate Kyle on the microaggressions of black people and black women in, in particular. And, you know, Kenya's talking about let's not, you know, use the race card. That Garcelle actually didn't even use the race card to be, she didn't use the race card. She asked a question and then she educated Kyle on the history of what that means. So honestly, I, and I get it, Kenya filmed with Kyle and, and, and Luann for the Housewives All-Stars, but that's a classic case of mind your business, P. 
period. Period. So Ebony. So Ebony went back to Ramona's house and she told Leah what happened. And Leah was like, no, she didn't. Like, she's ignorant. She's ignorant. Absolutely. Luann is ignorant. So here's my, here, and here's the issue that I have. And it, I'm, it's the issue that I actually had throughout the entire episode. And it was with Heather. I had an issue with Heather in this episode because I felt like Heather was trying to fit in. It was like, oh, I, you know, I've been around these type of people. I've been around these type of people. I know what that means. I know, I know how that feels for them. But the first issue that I had with Heather came in with Luann and with Ramona. She's sitting here trying to, you know, defend Ebony at this point. You know, she's trying to tell Luann, you know, what she said about, you know, she shouldn't have said angry to Ebony. And then the white fragility comment, she was like, you just need to ask her to educate you. The, the Like I said, the issue that I had with Eb, with Heather in that moment was, where was all this when they were at, when, when especially Ebony, when Ebony was at that table, the only person that we saw that came to her defense was Sonia. You were mute the entire time, but now that she's gone, you have a lot to say. Like, I don't like people like that. I can't stand people who do shit like that. When I'm, when I'm being attacked or berated or anything like that, and you know that it's wrong, you don't defend me when I'm there, but oh, when I leave, you got so much shit to say. Like, no, be the same person you are right now, be that person while I'm there. And, and that's what I, I had an issue with. It's like you waiting until Ebony left to say all this shit to, to Ramona and to Luann. Why? Why didn't you say that when Ebony was at that table? Like, it just didn't make sense to me. And we're going to get deeper into her not making sense to me. So, you know, the ladies, they get back to Ramona's house and Heather makes a beeline to Leah and um, Ebony. And... What does this say? Yeah, so, oh, okay, so it says she's hard to read. Because then she says when she's talking to Ebony and Leah that she's been involved with the black culture. And then she name drops Puffy and Beyonce. I was like, huh? Yes, they're black people. But their experiences are a lot different than someone like me or someone like an Ebony, their experiences are a lot different. One, they're rich. They're rich black people and they're powerful black people. So people are going to 100% treat them a lot differently than they would just a normal, average, regular Joe Blow. Like they're not gonna treat, people might mistreat, might have mistreated Beyonce in her earlier days, but the Beyonce of today, nobody's mistreating her white, black, or indifferent, unless you're just an outright racist person and you just don't like her. That's it. And the same with Puff. Unless, <clears throat> unless you're an outright racist person, you're not going to treat them any type of way. You're going to have respect for them. And, you know, I mean, I know Oprah said that she had, a, you know, she went into a store and they didn't want to sell something, you know, something to her, but that's very rare. So I was just confused by that with with um heather i'm like are you trying to fit in i think that's what she was trying to do was fit in but it was the most cringeworthy awkward shit i've ever saw in my life but let's move on all right you guys so they were supposed to have i guess it, i don't know when they were supposed to have dinner but ramona wanted them to you know bond over cooking but now they got to sit down and have this conversation so heather goes to talk to luann she wants luann to sit down with ebony and so they can talk things over but Luann, at this point, I was like, Luann still doesn't see where she's wrong. And even when she sat down with Ebony, she still couldn't see where she was wrong. I don't, I don't think she could see where she was wrong because they sat down and Ebony had to explain to her what it means when you call a black woman angry. And like I said, I don't know if she got it, but I think everyone else got it. Actually, I don't know who got it. I can tell you who I think got it. I think, I know, listening to Sonya, 
she got it. And it's so interesting that Sonya is a, the voice of reason when it comes to it. Because when Ebony explained herself to Lou, Lou did apologize. But then in the same breath, Lou wanted Ebony to apologize to her. And I was like, why would she apologize to you? Yes, she may have raised her voice, but she wasn't angry or upset. Like, that's the issue when it comes to us. We, they don't like it when we, you know, elevate in our speech. They want to say, oh my God, that's the angry black man, or oh, that's the angry black woman. Oh my God, can you not, can you talk to me and not scream at me? But especially on, on these shows, you see the white women do it all the time. They scream and how many times has Bethany screamed at, at the women? How many times has she done it? And Ebony made a very good point in this episode, especially when they would sit down, sitting down. She said, I just raised, I just got, my voice just got, uh, you know, my voice just went up. You know, I got, my voice got, ele my voice got elevated. But Leah screamed at you all and called you all hoes, but y'all didn't say nothing to her about being angry. But me, I'm the angry one. And I was like, exactly. Leah said, you're a hoe, you're a hoe, you're a hoe, you're a hoe. A bunch of hoes. But y'all were okay with Leah, Leah, a white woman, calling y'all hoes. Nothing's wrong with the white woman that's calling us hoes. But the black woman, God forbid, she raises her voice just a little bit. Oh my God, you're very angry. You're very angry. Like, the fuck? And I'm glad that Ebony did not apologize to Luann. Like, girl, sit all the way down, please and thank you. Heather, once again, I don't know what your angle was. I will say that Ebony did have a, a conversation with um, Sonya after this, just basically uplifting Sonya. Oops, excuse me, I didn't mean to burp me off face. Um, now, when Heather went into the room with Ebony and Leah, and told her that she's very articulate. I was like, what does that mean? She's very articulate. Did you expect for her to be anything less than? She was, a, okay. That's why I say Heather is a conundrum to me. But let's move on and wrap the episode up. All right, you guys. Yes, I'm looking at myself because I'm noticing, I've noticed over the last few years, because I have pictures of myself you know, selfies, and I'm smiling, and I noticed right here, there's a little dimple. I never knew that. I never knew for years that I had a dimple. <laughs> Interesting. Can you just randomly develop a dimple? I don't think there's one on this side. There's not one on this side. So I have one. It's just on this side? That's interesting. No dimple over here, but a dimple over here. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. I mean, aren't you born with dimples? I'm just very amazed by this. Dimples, can you develop? Don't judge me. Actually, y'all ain't gonna see this because I'm going. To, I'm gonna add this in. Can you develop? Dimples. They're inherited. Oh, okay. It's often said that cheek dimples are an inherited dominant trait. However, very little research has actually been done into the actual genetics of cheek dimples. Someone with dimples as a child may not have them as an adult. Additionally, a child born without dimples may develop them later on in, in their childhood. Have I, I, I don't think I have, did I have a dimple in my childhood? I guess so, and it just wasn't as defined as it is now. Child people, somebody actually Googled, can you give yourself a dimple? I would hope, well, you know, Black China did, because when she got her cheeks pierced, after she took her piercings out, that left the dimple. So I guess if you want to get you. Oh, 
Oh, you know what? I think that's why. I think I've always had them because I did have fat cheeks. I had the fattest little cheeks as a baby. And even when, actually, you know what? I've always had this dimple. I've actually always had my dimple because I actually have a picture of myself as a baby and I had it when I was a kid. So yeah, I've always had this. It's just interesting. I don't have one on, it's literally, I don't have one on this side. <laughs> I don't have a dimple on this side, but it's, it's not deep on this side, but it's a dimple over here nonetheless. It's just not one on both, it's just, I don't have one dimple. But my ex-boyfriend used to have a dimple. He has a dimple on one side too. It's interesting. How do you have a dimple on one side but not the other? <laughs> Weird. But listen, all right, you guys. So the funny thing is I just talked for three whole minutes about a dimple. <laughs> but I deleted it so y'all won't see it. Oh, all right, you guys. So we see Ramona and um, Sonia talking. And in Ramona's confessional, in her interview with the producer, she's talking about the fact that, you know, with Emmy around, she feels like she has just learned so much. I'm like, girl, use a lie. I lie, I don't care who tell it. You, I don't believe it. So then we see Ebony. So Ebony is calling her friend Devin, who is a matchmaker. She wants to set Sonia up. I'm like, okay, that's cool. Speaking of Sonia, whatever happened to Frenchie? Because we saw Frenchie one minute and the next minute we don't see Frenchie anymore, but that's neither here nor there. I just wonder what happened to Frenchie. So the ladies are going to go fishing for the day and then they will go out. Well, not go out. They'll have um, lunch. And this is all set up by Ramona. So, and we also find out that, you know, they're going to go to a Halloween party and I think it's 70s themed. So we see the ladies are fishing. Everyone is fishing with the exception of Lou and Leah. So I don't think they caught any fish. Now Luann. So once Luann finished fishing, you know, she and Ebony, they had a conversation. Lou was pulling the whole woe is me thing, I felt. She's talking about how she felt so bad about the situation with Ebony. Now, I'm not going to say that she didn't feel bad, but I'm like, girl, this is just like, woe is me to me. But, um, you know, they move, they're able to move forward. Ebony's better than me. Um, so then all the ladies, when they sit for lunch, Ebony invites the ladies to her home to watch the election. I was like, ooh, I, I don't know how this is going to go. This, you, this reminds me of the season when you know who, 2016, when you know who won, when, uh, <laughs> Oh God, when it was Heather and, not Heather, but Ramona and uh, Carol. Oh my God, I remember that episode. Cause then Carol had, Carol had a watch party because Carol was going for Hillary Clinton and Ramona was going for, uh, you know who. So then they, you know, Leah just says that, you know, she doesn't know she's gonna vote because she's very disgusted with politics, but don't give her that. I have been disgusted with politics for the last four years and I'm still disgusted with politics. And at this point, it's the Republican Party. They are allowing you know who to take over the party. And Leah did say something that I definitely did agree with that when it comes to this, that it seems like it's a cult. And then Heather said, well, I don't think I'm in a cult. I was like, oh my God, Heather, do not tell me you support you know who. Ugh. Not a good look. Girl, you support you. Oh, God. Ugh. Ugh. Um, yeah. So then we see all the ladies. They're getting ready for the Halloween party. And my heart went out to Leah because I know exactly what that feels like with her grandmother. Her mom called her. I, I know that feeling all too well. 2012 was the beginning of the, you know, the decline. Actually, it was November 2012 for my grandmother when she passed. You know, she passed away New Year's Day 2013, but she started to decline November. She declined 
before Thanksgiving or was it after? I think it was before Thanksgiving because my uncle passed. One of my twin uncles passed away. And after that, you know, my grandmother just started to slowly decline. We didn't know if we would have her for Christmas, but God, you know, saw fit for us to have her for Christmas. But she was, on, she was on a slow, slow decline. And then New Year's Day, well, actually it was New Year's Eve when we rushed to the hospital and, you know, the doctors just told us there was nothing they could do for her because her cancer was so, her cancer had just spread at that point and they could feel it. Oh God. So I, I definitely empathize with Leah and I felt, I felt so bad for Leah, you know, just hearing her cry because I was like, I just felt for her. Um, so then Ebony was talking to Leah, telling her that Heather felt some type of way about Leah saying that she wasn't gonna vote. And that sparked the whole fight between Leah and Heather. It was interesting when, because honestly, I really just think Heather should just mind her business to be quite honest with you. That's just my personal opinion, but you guys can let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And leave, like I said, leave your comments, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell button so you guys are aware of when I drop anything else. Share this video, and until the next one, stay safe, you guys. Take care of yourselves. Wash your hands. Wear your mask or not. Whichever one you choose to do, just be safe and doing so. And be blessed, you guys, and I'll see you guys later. So I'll see you guys tomorrow for three videos. I will be doing... BET presents the Encore, um, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, as well as Sisters on BET. Bye, guys.